Let us look at say okay. You can write anything. So let us look at um, one over n raised to power twenty-five plus something minus one by n divided by n. I am just taking some random kind of thing. Let us look at the sequence. I want to know whether it is convergent or not and what is the limit if it is convergent. I know that 1 over n goes to 0. So, it is 1 over n multiplied by 1 over n. right? So, that goes to 0 minus 1 to the power n divided by n that goes to 0. So, multiply it 30 times does not matter this goes to 0 and this also goes to 0. So, this plus this plus this. So, that should go to 0. So, this is a kind of thing you can do. I am just cooking up an example, but you will see later on these are useful theorems. right? Okay. So, uh, one more tool which helps. So, let me write one. So, let me write the example first and then write the let us write uh, the sequence a n to be equal to sin n divided by. So, let us write n. So, this is the term of the sequence a n. What can I say about the denominator? If I do not have sin only denominator then 1 over n that goes to 0. Sin n Right, so there is something it doesn't go somewhere, but it doesn't go anywhere. Right, it remains between something. So one writes this as mod of a n is equal to mod of sin n. I don't know what is sin n. I am not interested. Also, this is less than or equal to one over n because sin function is bounded by. Right. So, it is something like saying if I have a sequence a n which is bounded and b n which is convergent then the product will be convergent. right? So, essentially it says that this goes to 0. So, but what is happening is a n is dominated by 1 over n and this is always bigger than or equal to 0. You can think of left hand side as a constant sequence. So, this is a sequence C n where every time is 0. Is the constant sequence convergent? Obviously, because it does not go anywhere, right? It stays put there. So, for every epsilon, right, all the terms are near. So, everything will work out nicely, no problems. Constant sequence is always convergent to the term which is a constant, right? So, now this is between two convergent things. So, it is kind of sandwiched between two. So, the sequence which we have a n is sandwiched between we call it as b n, b n and c n and both b n and c n are converging to 0. So, that indicates something more general. right? So, this limit of course, is equal to 0 and that probably says supposing a n is less than or equal to b n is less than or equal to c n for every n. Suppose you got three sequences a n, b n and c n. I am trying to model on that example now. right? And suppose this and this both of them converge to a limit l. So, convergence means what? b n and c n are going to come closer to c n is going to come closer to l, b n is going to come closer to l. That means, b n and c n are both coming closer to each other and poor a n is sandwiched in between. So, it has to come closer to l. Right? So, the theorem should be if. So, let me write the theorem. If a n b n and c n are such that Uh, 
sorry uh, I wrote C n there. So, let me keep that say that C n is less than or equal to A n is less than or equal to B n for every I do not need for every n because I am interested only in the convergence. So, we should write for every n bigger than sum and not because tail is important it is not what is the thing actually is n not and uh, B n converges to L C n converges to L then A n converges to L. So, this is what is called the sandwich theorem. If something is sandwiched between convergent things, so that has to converge. So, shall I write a proof or we will try to write a proof yourself? Right? I have given you the idea. So, here is the idea. So, please write down the proof yourself, and here is the idea A n converging to L, that means given some epsilon, there is a stage after which mod C n minus mod C n minus L absolute value is less than. So, the first this one, this one will give me mod of C n minus L less than epsilon and the second one will give me mod of B n minus L less than epsilon. For a given epsilon, there is a stage say that this for every n may be some other stage n 1 does not matter. right? But if I look at the stage bigger than these two stages, then for that tail this also happens, this also happens. Then what happens to what can I say about because that is what I want to analyze, right? Can I say A n minus L will be less than for that stage onwards, right? Whatever is the bigger one. Is that okay? So, this kind of manipulations one has to do, right, in analysis. That means you have to change your estimates a bit depending on your requirement. So, something happens for one stage, something happens for another stage. If you go beyond that, then both will happen. So, we have got both available to you, right. So, write down, see if you like the picture, here is uh, L, here is L minus epsilon, here is L plus epsilon, where is after some stage. C n is here, after some stage B n is here right? and after both the stages both are inside and where is A n? A n is here. So, A n is inside L minus epsilon and L plus epsilon so what? So, write it in terms of mathematics. Okay? Right. So, this is what is called sandwich theorem. So, in this example that we have done you can say that this is by sandwich theorem. Right? So, let us uh, do one more example to illustrate the usefulness of these things. So, let us look at an example. Okay, so, let us look at let us look at a number x between 0 and 1. So, let x be between 0 and 1. Okay. Let us look at a n which is equal to x to the power n. So, question is a n convergent, is a n convergent. So, what one will do? as usual try to inspect the sequence at least first right and this is what george polya said there was a mathematician called george polya if you have not heard the word go and google george polya and he has written a very marvelous book called how to solve it which is available on the internet free at least i could get one copy but it is not very costly indian edition is available so read it it says you want to prove something for every x. He says one thing is try to look at particular cases of that problem. Step 1, what is the particular case? 
for example, I can look at x is equal to 1 by 2, 1 by 3, 1 by 5, something like that, less than 1, bigger than 0 and look at what happens to the sequence, <coughs> right. It looks like if I take 1 by 2, 1 by 3 or 1 by 4 and go on multiplying them again and again, it seems to be becoming smaller and smaller, right. So, there is a pattern in the examples that we are saying and that seems to indicate that this should go to 0. So, that is Polya's suggestion. Look at particular cases that may give you a hint what is true and how to prove it possibly or for a particular case you may get that this is not true. Even then you should be happy because you have solved the problem saying that for a general case this does not have a solution. You have a counter example. So, even then that is good, right. So, read that book if and when you find time. So, claim whatever I have said that a n goes to 0, right. But is x to the power n. So, I should try to now do something so that I can estimate x to the power n for n large enough, right. Showing it goes to 0, that means I should be able to say x to the power n becomes smaller and smaller as n becomes larger and, but in a way conclusive way, not by examples, right. So, let us look at if, so claim, so let us write a proof of that. x is between 0 and 1, then what can you say about 1 over x? that will be bigger than 1, right. So, let us write let 1 over x, it is 1 plus something, it is bigger than 1, so it will be 1 plus something, some h bigger than or equal to strictly bigger than 0, okay, right. Now, what I am interested in? I am not interested in x, I am interested in power of x. So, let us raise the power. So, implies 1 over x raised to power n is the 1 plus h raised to power n, right. So, the left hand side is 1 over x to the power n is equal to, now that I can expand now using my familiar binomial theorem. So, 1 plus n h plus h raised to power n right. It is 1 over of the required thing. If I make 1 over of x n which is my required thing less than something then x right. So, that will or bigger than something that will give me an estimate. So, now if I forget this one and I forget all remaining ones what will happen? So, this will imply 1 over x n is bigger than n h. Okay? Because everything is non negative. I am forgetting non negative quantities, keeping only one term, and that implies x to the power n is less than 1 over n times h for every n. h is fixed, is a constant. So, that says, so this is bigger than 0, right. So, implies by sandwich theorem that x n goes to 0 right. That says this must go to 0. So, sandwich theorem is useful in this kind of a thing, but you have to make an esti guess, then try to estimate it by something known possibly, right. So, this is where our analysis comes into picture, right. That is why we are doing real analysis, okay, right. Now, here is uh, once you, this is done, can I say something about if x is not positive, but it is um, x is between uh, minus 1 is less than x less than 0. Can I use my analysis above to say something about this now? It is a negative quantity, but still less than absolute value is less than 1. So, at least what I can say is, if this is so, then I can say mod x to the power n goes to 
or this is same as x to the power n mod. Is it okay? Both are same? Yes. So, I have got a sequence whose absolute value is going to 0. Can you say the sequence goes to 0? If you like this itself anyway, right, it goes to 0, this can be made small, this actually proves. But the question is, if mod a n goes to 0, does it imply a n goes to 0? So, keep it as a question, think about it okay? and the problem sessions try to analyze this question. If it is not there in the problem sheet, try to analyze this question. You can analyze both ways. If a n goes to 0, does mod a n go to 0? And converse, if mod a n goes to 0, does a n go to 0? And you can even improve your uh, question, if a n goes to some l, does mod a n go to mod l and is the converse true. So, you can generate your own questions and think and analyze, that is how you progress in uh, solving. So, you can try to analyze another one more question that a n converges to l, if and only if mod a n converges to l, I do not know. right? So, you have to analyze this. For L equal to 0, I am saying it is true. For L equal to not equal to 0, maybe it is still true, but you have to analyze that. right? So, if you want to prove, give an argument. If you want to disprove, then you have to give a counter example for anyone. So, there are two way statements, if and only if. Okay? right? So, what we have done is till now, we have looked at convergence of a sequence. We have tried to analyze possible ways it can converge or diverge. It can diverge if it is not coming closer to a value, right? that is divergence. It is unbounded or it fluctuates possibly. Right? If convergent, it must be bounded. So, not bounded will imply not convergent. And for analyzing convergence of sequences, we have got some tools, algebra of limits, sandwich theorem. Right? Till now, any doubt? No? So, let us go ahead a bit more. Look at something. Okay. There are some, but uh, till now, we have not analyzed that example when we said they look at uh, try to find out the area of the unit circle, that approximations, right, by inscribed n gons and making the sides bigger and larger and larger. We said eventually it should give me area of the circle. Still now, we do not have any mathematical tool which says yes, you can do something. So, let us try to formalize that. So, let us define what is called a increasing and a decreasing sequence, which is obvious. In fact, you may be knowing. So, a sequence a n is called monotonically increasing if a n increasing. So, next one is bigger than a n plus 1 is bigger than or equal to a n for every n, bigger than or equal to 1. Right? And similarly, you can write <coughs> decreasing so, what will be the condition? A n plus 1 is less than or equal to A n. Right? Two parallel definitions. Increasing, every next term is bigger than or equal to the previous one. Decreasing and so on. Right? So, here is, here, pardon? Maybe, I am just saying less than or equal to, bigger than or equal to. If you want to say no, if you do not, I am not happy with this, then you will add the word strictly monotonically increasing or strictly monotonically decreasing. If I do not say that, some terms could be equal. 10th and the 11th may be equal, but then the other ones may be less than possible. So, monotonically increasing means a n plus 1 is bigger than or equal to. 
right strictly will mean this inequality is strict that's all is clear right there is only one way you can interpret a statement here is a mathematical statement okay you can say that by this definition yes okay no problem what is wrong with that a constant sequence is both monotonically increasing and decreasing what's wrong with that if it causes a problem to you in your mind then you have to clear cobwebs in your mind probably okay right okay so here is uh, a theorem i want to prove which says that if a n is i will just write m i okay mathematicians have a very bad habit of shortening everything okay they don't want to write english at all so m i will mean monotonically increasing if the sequence then and is bounded above it is convergent then it is convergent so let us look at a proof of this keep in mind real numbers is a complete ordered field right that means it has the lub property now if so let us see how will the proof you think will go if a sequence is monotonically increasing right it could be a constant sequence doesn't go anywhere then it is convergent anyway right we are trying to prove a monotonically increasing sequence is convergent so let us assume that is not the case it is at some stages it may be constant but then it will be increasing right an plus 1 will be strictly bigger than an at some places but we know it is bounded it cannot go beyond something it is bounded above right so if i try to plot the terms of the sequence on the line they will be somewhere on the line and there is a barrier right so essentially what we are saying is here is a line here is a barrier say alpha and all the terms a1 a2 and an and they are all on the left side of it and going nearer and nearer as it is as if you are walking to the wall and you are taking a step positively you are not just standing there if you keep standing you will never reach the wall you must take some step whichever smaller step you want right then eventually you will reach somewhere that is a claim that is what the theorem is saying now what do you think possibly could be the limit of a monotonically increasing sequence if it is bounded so it should be the some kind of a largest value of the sequence but the sequence may not have a largest value so there must be something which is the largest all the terms are smaller but they don't go beyond it but they come closer to it right so in some sense what we are saying is limit possibly is the least upper bound for that sequence that is our guess so claim so let us write claim so let alpha b equal to lub of the sequence not as a sequence but sequence as a set right when you are plotting it on the line you are taking it as a set so it is a n n bigger than or equal to 1 i am looking at that set this is a set a if you like define the set a to be the image of the sequence you can call it if you like at n a n is a number that is a real number so collect all these real numbers put them in a box call that as a set a that set a so has so this exists because of lub property right because it is a bounded set all the ans are on the left of something right so this is a set which is bounded below by anyway bounded below by zero or uh, below by a1 or not that is not important it is a set which is bounded above it is a non empty set because a1 is there a2 is there all the terms are there so this set a 
the image set of the sequence is a non empty subset of real numbers which is bounded above right so what should happen it should have least upper bound so let us call that least upper bound as alpha so alpha is the least upper bound of that set okay so now we want to claim that an converges to alpha so what should i have to what i have to show to show for every epsilon bigger than 0 there exists some n not say that where is an alpha minus an that is a non negative number because alpha is least upper bound that is same as the mod is less than epsilon for every n bigger than that is what i have to show is that okay if you like this is same as mod of alpha minus an is it clear so i am fixing my target now so here is the line here is a1 a2 an and here is my alpha and i'm given a epsilon so that is same as saying alpha is uh, uh, alpha minus epsilon right is less than an right that alpha minus an less than epsilon is same as saying i take an on the other side and alpha on this side is that okay yes okay now here is alpha so here is somewhere alpha minus epsilon right that will be on the left side of it now can i say that alpha minus epsilon cannot be an upper bound for the sequence <coughs> alpha is given to be the upper bound least upper bound if i subtract something from it that cannot be the least upper bound nothing smaller can be we have already taken the least upper bound as alpha so if this is not least upper bound that means what there must be term of the sequence on the right side of this at least one right so there must be some an not which is on the right side of it is it okay but if one an not crosses over l minus epsilon all will cross over because it is monotonically increasing all the remaining ones will be here that means what given epsilon i have found a n not say that all the ans after n not are inside l minus epsilon and l plus epsilon now what does that prove given epsilon i have found a stage n not say that all the ans after n not are inside l minus epsilon and l that precisely says limit has to be equal to l proof is over right so let us write that <clears throat> this whatever we have thought about so since alpha minus epsilon cannot be upper bound okay i should write better cannot be an upper bound for the sequence there exists n not such that l minus epsilon is less than an not is less than alpha oh what was where where is l there is no l right is only alpha alpha is the one we are looking at so alpha minus epsilon right is it okay but an is monotonically increasing implies an bigger than or equal to an not for every n bigger than n not <coughs> right because it is more and an is less than or equal to alpha for every n because alpha is equal to lub so nothing can go beyond lub anyway <coughs> 
So, what does this to imply? So, imply for every n bigger than n naught, a n is between alpha and alpha minus epsilon. Right? Whatever we saw that picture, I am translating that picture now into the mathematical language. That is all, nothing more. Right? So, that means implies limit a n n going to infinity is equal to alpha. So, that proves. So, what we are saying is every monotonically increasing sequence which is bounded above must converge. So, another tool in our kitty of analyzing sequences, right? Algebra of limits, sandwich theorem, and all that, and plus one more is there. And correspondingly, you can write the other part. If a sequence is monotonically decreasing, so let me write as a corollary a n monotonically decreasing bounded below implies a n convergent. Okay. So, increasing to decreasing you can just go by if a n is increasing minus of that sequence will be decreasing right? because minus reverts the inequalities. Bounded above negatives will be bounded below that will converge and now you should use that limit theorems negative of a n is converging. So, a n must converge right. So, that combined with the earlier one will give you this also. So, what we have shown is the least upper bound property implies every monotonically increasing bounded sequence is convergent. In fact, the converse is also true, I will not prove it that if you take a ordered field in which every monotonically increasing sequence is convergent then you can prove it should have the least upper bound property. So, that is an equivalent way of describing least upper bound property. We will not do that because this is an elementary course for analysis for you. So, what we are saying is we are taking definition of completeness as LUB property. One, we have shown that LUB property implies convergence of every monotone sequence which is either bounded above or increasing or bounded below if it is decreasing. Is okay? Right. So, now for example, as a consequence of this, as a consequence of this, I can define what is pi. Now, I can define what is pi. What is pi? Look at the sequence of increasing sequence of approximate areas, square, octagon, those I can compute numbers, those I can compute numbers, right? Because radius is 1, diagonal of the square is 1, radius is 1. So, all those octagons, 16 gone, all are made up of triangles, all are made up of triangles whose areas I know the formulas half base into height, right? I can compute. So, those numbers a n's I can compute, I know they are monotonically increasing. I know they are bounded above because I can have a square circumscribing the circle. So, that must converge and that is my mathematical definition of pi. So, I will call pi as the limit of those areas. So, that is one advantage of uh, going to real line completeness property. Okay?